Hello everyone, Giltar here with the first of three videos discussing a few different areas of my hobby of toy collecting. Uh, now this first area of discussion will be on the current state of toy designs in the mainstream toy lines. And I'm talking about the lower priced uh, products, so I'm not going to really focus any attention at all to higher end toys because uh, really this doesn't affect those types of toy lines. Now specifically I've noticed over the last about two, two to three years, um, various toy companies have been reducing the level of intricacy of their, you know, quote unquote, lower end or basically mainline toys. So things about anywhere from, you know, two or three dollars up to about fifteen dollars. Now these are toys made specifically for children. And for the past decade, we've, to be honest, uh, seen a higher level of toy design, essentially ounce for ounce in the mainline or everyday toys. However, due to various factors such as increasing production costs, and general decline in the uh, global economy, I believe that toy manufacturers have decided to cut back on toy production costs in a few different ways. Now, I've noticed reductions in manufacturing costs largely in two areas. Um, the degree of paint application on toys, so whether you're talking amount or the detail, or even the quality control, uh, and another sort of big, I guess, um, symptom or you know visual cue that I've seen is the amount of articulation, which has been fairly you know, reduced in terms of uh, amount. Uh, so, for example, um, aside from like maybe something like Marvel Universe, many of the three and three quarter inch up to about the five to six inch action figures, um, I've seen a reversion to the classic five points of articulation. So we're talking joints at the neck, both shoulders, and both hips. I'm not seeing very many uh, joints in the knees, elbows, wrists, and ankles anymore in these lower price cost uh, toy products. Now, my initial reaction to this was basically a bit of disappointment. Um, as a, an adult uh, collector of toys, I'm a big fan of articulation. I love posing my uh, figures, my toys for display. Uh, however, after putting some thought into the whole situation and really truly considering why companies like Hasbro and Mattel and other toy manufacturers would choose to go such a route, I realized, well, first of all, these are toys. They're made for children. Um, and I think the manu management uh, departments of these various toy companies have come to realize that young children, most of them, really don't need super articulation in their toys. Um, the five points of articulation I've mentioned should be enough for most children from ages 3 to 12 um, to really just have fun, uh, and they can still pose them if they like, although you know it is limited posability, but still, you can still stand them up and put them on the shelf if you want to. And more importantly, and this is something I you know remember as a kid, you take your toys out to the yard, to the sandbox, to your friend's house, and you really, you know, give them a rough time. You bang them up, you throw them around, you um, have, you know, crossover wars with G.I. Joes and Transformers and Thundercats and all these other toy lines, you know, in the yard, and you're just creating this huge scale war. And nobody cares about posability or paint applications necessarily. At that age, at least for myself, I was just simply happy to have a toy that I could play around with outside with my friends. So, again, I, I think in my speculation, the most efficient way for toy manufacturers to continue to offer their you know, relatively low priced products is to reduce the cost of toy production in ways that won't compromise kind of like the needs of their main demographic, which are again, young children. Um, and really, you know, the, the painting process is something that can be expensive when you want to take fine detail. And when you do take fine detail, you can't really do that through machinery anymore, you know, automated machines. You need to have a human being there to actually, uh, in, in some cases, you know, hand paint the finer details. And that means more manpower and thus more, you know, labor cost, uh, which factors in, you know, manufacturing and production costs. Uh, now, the other thing you know about the reduction in, in points of articulation or the joints really comes down to parts count. The fewer parts that a toy needs to be molded separately and then afterwards be assembled into the finished product, uh, the fewer parts, the lower the cost. You know, the, the, the more parts that we have, that means there's more assembly required 
on the manufacturing end and thus more time, more money, more manpower, not everything else that's involved. Um, so definitely, again, after taking some time to think about this, it really just makes sense to me. Now, many of the online toy collecting you know, enthusiasts uh, uh, out there really, they've, I think, unfairly criticize toy manufacturers for what they see as a step backwards in toy design. But I'm really not one of them. I, again, I, I think I can see why the manufacturers have done what they've done. And at the end of the day, the vast majority of these products are made for a very specific type of consumer. It's not the toy collector who is a teenager or a young adult or an adult. It's for children. Again, really young children. And the thing is, despite what the toy companies have done in terms of um, scaling back the complexity of their lower end toys, they haven't forgotten about the more serious toy collector, the toy enthusiast. Um, they recognize that you know people like myself are a valuable and valid source of revenue. You know, as an adult, I'm the one who's making money. I have a uh, a source of disposable income that a young child would not have. You know, children depend on their parents to buy things for them. So. With this in mind, that's why we still have toy lines like Marvel Legends, which are you know between fifteen and twenty dollars or above. We have Transformers, for example, that have various price points uh, divided up into size classes. You know, Voyager size class and upwards. That's really going to be for the more at least older child or more serious toy collector or toy enthusiast. And things like Masterpiece as a toy line, for example, that's right up there in terms of being a collectible and not simply a toy that is expensive. Now, I think it's unfortunate that the vocal minority of online toy collectors uh, are the ones that are often heard. They do take a very narrow, a myopic view of the situation and only see flaws in, in, in the mainline toys because you know, they're not seeing toy design aspects that they want to see for themselves. But again, you know, if they if they take a step back, take a look at the large picture, like any toy manufacturer, you know, marketing and management department would view, um, and as you know, any business model out there would have, you have to see that the manufacturers have simply adjusted their approach to making sure that they can still offer lower cost toys and keep their products affordable for their main customer base, which are young children, who basically have their parents pay for what they buy. And let's be honest, a parent won't pay top dollar for just any old toy when they have more important costs to take care of, you know, food and shelter, you know, all these other, you know, expenses and costs for their family. You know, I'm pretty sure most parents are going to be like, which toy is most affordable? I'll get that one for my child. They're not thinking, does this toy look better than the other because it has better paint application or it has more accessories? No, they're not thinking that. They're thinking, which toy can I appease my child with? That's basically it. And at the end of the day, I just think that we're fortunate right now to have toy manufacturers that are willing to cater to a broad spectrum of customers. I mean, they're willing to make cheap toys for the kids, which are the, the main bulk of who are going to be their customers. But at the same time, they still set aside research and development and marketing and production to higher end toys that can cater to us, the toy collectors, you know, the adult toy enthusiasts. I actually think that came out wrong. Just forget I said that. But you know what I mean. So essentially, that's all I have to say about this for now. Um, please feel free to take part in this discussion. Um, as usual, I welcome all text comment responses as well as video responses. Um, and as always, thank you very much for your time. Have a great day, and I'll see you at the next video.